Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are so happy for you to join us today. My name is Dr. Patty O'Malley, and I'm a staff psychologist and the coordinator for eating and body image issues. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'll be presenting today with my colleague, Kirsten, who will now, uh, who will now provide an introduction. Hello to you all. My name is Kirsten Elliott Noon, and I am a current postdoctoral fellow at CAPS. My pronouns are she, they. Our goals for today are to provide mental tips for surviving and thriving as you transition to the University of Michigan. We will also be sharing information about counseling and psychological services or CAPS. This webinar is being recorded and the chat function has been disabled. We would love to answer your questions. So as they arise, please submit them via the Q&A feature and we'll be uh, sure to address them at the end of our presentation. All right. So before we begin, we want to be sure to recognize the artwork and images that are on each slide. The art was created by a former UM student who was in Stamps School of Art and Design and is also featured on our first year experience guide, which you have access to and will be talked about more later in the presentation. So this is an overview of today's session. We'll be touching on a number of common transitions that students may experience, as well as some tips on how to navigate those transitions. We'll also provide information about various resources, such as our services here at CAPS. And as Patty mentioned, there will be some time at the end of the presentation for addressing any questions you might have. Great. So as we look at this image and start our presentation, we encourage you to take a moment to pause and reflect. Take a few deep breaths if you're able and think about your journey, about where you are right now in your development. And we encourage you to reflect on what's really important to you right now. Uh, this may be what your interests are, your values, some of your worries, what you're not so sure about, uh, things you're really excited about. Uh, think about how high school has been for you with all the successes and challenges that come along with it. Also, we encourage you to think about what really got you here to this point where you're preparing to start your undergraduate careers here at the University of Michigan. What are you excited about? What are your strengths? What are your hopes? We encourage you to continue to breathe throughout this presentation and to keep all of your hopes for your time at U of M in mind as you continue on this important transition process. Now let's get into some of the common transitions that first year students often navigate. Uh, leaving home for college can bring about many new experiences. So this might be your first experience living on your own. This can involve leaving behind family and friends, community, familiar surroundings. Depending on your style, you may have different ways of saying goodbye or keeping in touch. For many students and parents, getting ready to leave for college might be a time of mixed emotions, such as feeling sad, excited, anxious, all at once. So acknowledging the feelings that arise and seeking support can be very helpful. On the other hand, you may also feel fine and ready to go. Any and all reactions are common. Then, of course, missing home and familiar surroundings is another common transition, but this might be felt sooner by some students and for others, it may be experienced later. UM will be a new home base in many ways. Students will be navigating new environments, resources, and people on campus all of which will become more familiar with time and help to contribute a sense of home at UM. So new students can often face challenges like best friends going to other universities, beginning new romantic relationships, maintaining existing ones, and juggling newly formed relationships with already established ones. So balancing a sense of connectedness and separation while at college. Other transitions can include lifestyle and routine adjustments, such as waking themselves up for class, this might be new to some who are used to having parents or others at home to assist with this. New routines often involve such things as effective time management, getting enough sleep, managing finances or budgeting, and finding a good balance at both work and fun. So managing basic tasks like eating, sleeping, exercising, going to class. Uh, new students must also address more complex responsibilities such as balancing, studying, and socializing. Uh, as it relates to living situations, some students may be living with a roommate for the first time and getting along may not always be easy. While this can be a great opportunity to make a new friend, it's also common for students to face some challenges with this process, such as learning how to share a space, adapting to someone else's living habits and learning how to communicate effectively and resolve conflict. 
Other interpersonal adjustments can include making new friends. Some students may be coming to campus with some already, whereas others may not have any connections or friends just yet. This can be an exciting but also anxiety provoking transition to meet new people. And finally, along with making new friends, students will have the opportunity to connect with people from diverse backgrounds. One of the great things about college life is meeting students from various backgrounds and cultures that might differ from yours. It may be new for you to meet people with different identities than your own, but an important part of the college experience is being able to connect with others that have different walks of life and different worldviews. We learn not only in the classroom, but also from each other, which is a crucial part of living into the values of multiculturalism and inclusivity. Here are the top five reasons students seek uh, services at CAPS, and these are self-identified reasons uh, that students have shared. Uh, anxiety is the top reason. It's been the top reason for a number of years. Um, you may be likely uh, able to imagine the number of uh, things a new student would be um, concerned about. Uh, a lot of that can be about the adjustment piece, navigating the new relationships, um, you know, getting used to different academic schedules. Uh, these are all different concerns that can contribute to anxiety in addition to uh, some anxiety that students may be bringing uh, to campus with them already. Uh, depression is the next most common concern reported by students who are seeking CAP services. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it it's, can be challenging to adjust sometimes. A lot of opportunity, but can be challenging as well. Um, and some of these difficulties with balancing can lead to distress, um, which can sometimes look like decreased motivation, uh, changes in energy or interest in things that uh, folks once uh, found pleasurable, uh, sometimes difficulty getting out of bed, just really not feeling like oneself. Uh, third reason is emotion management. Uh, everyone, uh, every student comes to campus with their own unique strengths, resilience, um, and there are also times when um, our emotions get uh, a bit hard for us to manage. And uh, so this is a common concern that folks are, are seeking services from CAPS and trying to learn some skills on how to cope and how to really regulate, identify, label, name, and label those emotions. Academic performance is another reason. Um, you know, UM can be a challenging learning environment uh, for some. Uh, there is often a high quality of work that's required and a, and a, a high uh, workload and uh, deadlines. Um, working with uh, classmates on group projects and navigating relationships with professors and uh, graduate student instructors. Uh, so, uh, you know, there can be some relation, relational concerns in addition to roommates and uh, just a lot of different uh, relationships. Um, there are also folks who, who have, uh, you know, make fast friends with roommates. So a wide variety of experiences. Um, we wanna encourage uh, folks to know that talking about these concerns can help with problem solving, talking about resources and coping. And so it's important to keep in mind that these are some commonly reported concerns. Uh, these, uh, some of them stay pretty stable over time and some of them change over time, uh, but these are um, some important aspects of mental health that bring students in to seek services at CAPS in addition to others that um, are out there as well. So here are some common feelings that you might have in your first year. So excitement and anxiety are understandable emotional reactions during this time. You might be really thrilled to start a new journey, but a little frightened of what it can mean. It's also common to feel some pride in yourself for accomplishing a rather impressive goal of attending a university and eventually completing a degree. Other emotions you could have in the first year are confusion, embarrassment, and shame, which are also common as you're doing this brand new experience. Confusion could be due to feeling overwhelmed at learning all the new college processes and campus and classes. Embarrassment and shame is something we can see often in first gen students that feel they're missing all the other information everybody else seems to have. And part of these transitions can be stress related to our, our identities. It can take some work to navigate the different facets of our own identities while also building our communities, uh, in, in a space that can be new. Um, and for some folks, uh, U of M and the Ann Arbor campus uh, is an incredibly diverse uh, environment. And for others, it's it doesn't feel that way as much. And so a lot of different varied experiences. Uh, and so each of us will be coming together from different backgrounds, worldviews, perspectives, different values. And these can include uh, some important identities for some of us, uh, how we identify when it comes to gender identity, when it comes to sexual orientation, our socioeconomic status, um, ability status, um, if we uh, have a faith background and uh, religious background, um, our race, our ethnicity, 
um, body type and shape is another um, one of, of many identities can they, that can be important to us uh, over time. And it can be an amazing time of opportunity. Uh, and also there can be some challenges to navigate these differences, connect with others, and try to build community. Uh, some students also struggle with beliefs about their academic ability or intelligence. Um, often students are engaging in social comparison, um, which can be certainly be challenging, can take us away from focusing on what's really important to us and, and staying grounded in, in what got us here. Um, we encourage you to keep in mind that all of our journeys are different and talking about these concerns might help identify more effective thinking and coping strategies. Self-image is often something that students are, are uh, working with. Um, these can be thoughts about our appearance, um, our gender expression, ability status, and many college students uh, also struggle with body image. Uh, there can be cultural pressures uh, for, for appearance being a certain way, uh, along with messages from the media, family, peers about what's acceptable and what's not. And also for, uh, as Kirsten mentioned, for some first-gen students, um, being the first in your family to go to college um, can be an exciting uh, experience and one of, of real pride. And also there can be some real uncertainty in, in trying to uh, figure things out as, as we go along. So one thing that we can do often is check in with ourselves. Ask, how do you know when you're feeling at your best mentally and or emotionally? For you, it might be noticing that you're having difficulty concentrating on your studies or you find it difficult going to class. Maybe you have physical symptoms like headaches, stomach aches, nerves. Maybe you have significant changes in your sleeping and eating patterns or a lack of energy, feeling like you're not quite motivated to do things that you were previously able to do. Getting angry, sad, stressed easily, sometimes for what feels like no reason, or losing interest in things that you enjoy. Maybe you're having difficulty um, keeping up your appearances or following through with hygiene routines or avoiding people altogether and kind of having some moments of social isolation. So know kind of what your triggers are and what your differences might be that you need to check in with yourself about. So now we'd like to just share some more tips. And getting support can look like a lot of things. And sometimes students may need support for their own mental health, or they might be concerned about a friend. It's important to know that research shows students will often first turn to each other or other non-professional sources of support for help. Uh, but there are times when additional support can be helpful. And here are some tips to start with. Uh, first off, we encourage you to be patient. Remember that you once adjusted to high school, and it can take that amount of time or longer to adjust to college. We encourage considering self-compassion, which is all about being warm, understanding towards ourselves when we suffer, fail, or feel inadequate, rather than ignoring our pain or treating ourselves with self-compassion. Having compassion for oneself really is no different than having compassion for others, and there are really excellent resources there on, on how to learn self-compassion tips and strategies. Another thing we suggest is connecting with others and getting involved. And also, you just put yourself out there. There are a lot of events that happen right away at the start of the semesters, and there are events that happen throughout. Uh, so please know that if it doesn't happen right away, that's okay, it can take time, and that uh, sometimes students will think that they've missed their opportunity to make friends, and uh, this is not the case. Students can make friends throughout their college career. Can it also be helpful to communicate about your experiences? Uh, if you're feeling overwhelmed, it's likely that you're not the only one. Um, also knowing that uh, new places become more familiar with time, exposure, repetition. Can also be helpful to find a mentor or older students who can talk through their, their processes. And then also uh, knowing what resources are available to you, learning about those, utilizing them. Uh, so a lot of different tips. And I'll keep going with the tips. So one thing you can also do is adjust when you need to. So with expectations, it's okay if you need time to reevaluate your own expectations for what can be done. This is a different experience. You might need to adjust what program or major you're involved in. It's okay to follow a new passion. Scheduling, it's okay to realize you bit more off than you could chew and you need to take a break. You did an amazing job to get here. So something that you've been doing has worked for you. Remember that, remind yourself what worked and what didn't work in high school, but then adapt. Maybe it's different or needs to be now that you're here. Uh, fear of missing out. 
once you start adjusting and figuring out schedules and routines, you might come to realize you can't attend or do everything. It can be helpful to prioritize your goals, values, establish time management techniques, and set boundaries. You can also try and redefine what success means to you. You're starting a new chapter in your life, which means it can be very easy to compare yourself to others, like we said prior, but it's okay to focus on your own hard work and achievements. Run your own race. Find ways to maintain balance between different domains in your life and make time for self-care. As much as you're a student, you are also still human. You need breaks, whether that looks like socializing or reading, take time for yourself. As you're adjusting, make sure to emphasize sleep and nutrition, exercise, hygiene. Life's easier when you care for yourself. Take moments to pause and be mindful of the journey, what it took to get here. And self-care can really look different for each of us, depending on where we're at, um, what time of our, our lives we're in. And our, our last general tip is to just remember the basics. Uh, you know, that adjusting can take some time. Uh, it's important to try to establish sense of belonging and groundedness. Um, with everything students are asked to do, it can easy to, be easy to lose sight of some of these most fundamental elements of wellness, such as getting enough sleep, eating in a balanced way, taking time for movement, and connecting with others. And many of these things fall under the umbrella of self-care. And uh, we, again, we encourage you to, to use the self-care strategies that have worked well for you in the past and to also be open at the same time about learning new ones that might be um, a good fit for you to try now. Right, so caps. Recognizing when you may be struggling is an important part of knowing when to intervene. This is a time to offer support and or provide recommendations to seek out supportive services such as CAPS. It can help to normalize and promote help seeking by stressing that it's a strength to take advantage of your resources. So what do we do at CAPS? We provide free confidential solution focused therapy to currently enrolled students through one-on-one -on -one couples and group therapy options. Our diverse staff is composed of generalist clinicians that are equipped to help students with a variety of concerns that can arise during their time here. We are located at the Michigan Union on the fourth floor, and we also have embedded counselors in particular schools on campus. They can currently be contacted via email. Our hours of operation and contact information are listed here, and you can find more information by checking out the website. I will be putting some stuff in the chat for later on how to contact us. This is a picture of our staff from uh, fall of 2022. And our, uh, as Kirsten shared, our, our staff is diverse. We are passionate about college mental health. We have advanced training in social work or psychology. We are multidisciplinary staff and we are really dedicated to working with U of M students. Um, in addition to the services we provide, we provide uh, identity specific programming. We have groups based on topic areas and also identities like perfectionism, uh, social anxiety, eating and body image issues groups that are specific to undergraduate students, um, others for graduates only, and some that are mixed. We've got a lot of workshops focused on anxiety, body image, self-compassion. We also provide lunch series in partnership with uh, our partners on campus for international students and students of color with campus partners. And we also have online mental health screenings for students who want a better understanding of what they're experiencing. So CAPS is offering online scheduling for a 30-minute initial consultation appointment with a CAPS counselor at our central office. So please be assured that this is a confidential process and no one outside of CAPS has access to your personal information, including your appointment schedule. Uh, I'm going to put in the contact information, including our phone number, the virtual front desk email, as well as our Meet the Staff link. If you are interested in connecting with a particular staff member, you can visit that Meet the Staff website to view our counselors. Within the intake form, there is a section to request a counselor of your choosing. If unable to do this during your scheduling, you are able to request a specific counselor at the initial appointment. Please keep in mind this can vary due to fluctuating schedules during the semester. But that will be in the chat now. Keep on going. That's great, thank you. And so I'll uh, quickly share a little bit more about CAP services. Again, free confidential services for students enrolled. We provide in-person services, both group and individual. We also provide telehealth uh, services, either uh, phone or video um, 
And that's really uh, up to the students. Some students uh, really prefer in person, which is great. And others really prefer to have virtual, maybe if they're at their lab on campus and they can, you know, duck out from their uh, their experiment for 45 minutes, but, you know, coming to central campus might be a bit of a challenge. So a lot of different services. We try to be available for students. Um, again, we, the groups, we've got workshops. I really want to hi highlight that we have uh, urgent and crisis services. And so if students need to meet with the counselor on duty, we are available. Uh, sometimes I hear from students that uh, they can't seek services at CAPS, and then it's tricky because I'm sitting in my office uh, ready for that, that walk-in service. And so we want to really put that out there that uh, we have counselor on duty when students uh, need support right away, we are happy to, to meet with them either in person or virtually. Uh, and our current hours are the 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, our website has updates on those hours as they change as the semesters go. Which I think now we're more nine to five because it's spring semester and summer semester. Uh, we also have after hours support, which can be an excellent service. It's highly utilized by students. Students can call the CAPS main number and press zero to speak to a licensed mental health counselor and get that uh, real time uh, crisis support right away. So quite a few of our students use those resources. And then also we have uh, case management resources as well. We've got some case management folks who uh, do a nice job on connecting students who uh, maybe aren't so sure on resources or they need to get connected with uh, different health insurance options. Uh, so we've got case management services are, that are available as well. And then we also have screenings uh, or more brief, brief assessments and those can uh, include for folks who want to get a better understanding about their eating patterns assessment. Um, we've also got some supports that are specific to folks with alcohol and other drug concerns. And um, so a lot of different resources that we've got available. CAPS also has a peer counseling service, which allows students to talk one-on-one -on -one with a trained peer about their concerns. These can include subjects like social connection, transitioning, campus navigation, stress, et cetera. The Wolverine Support Network is another peer-led peer support option that is overseen by CAPS, which offers a group support experience rather than a one-on-one -on -one interaction. But then our next tip, we'll go over any additional ways we might be able to support general mental well-being. So we are a center who uh, tries to utilize technology as much as possible. And so uh, CAPS has uh, its own Instagram account. And so we've got information on workshops and programming that we're providing, groups that are coming up, also uh, general tips on mental health as well. We've got another app, it's called Stress Busters, that has daily messages and uh, video streams. So a lot of different resources that are within the self, uh, the Stress Busters app. And then we also have my talk. Uh, and this was developed a number of years ago, and we continue to, to offer it for students who are wanting to have a better a sense of uh, what's going on for them and uh, what next steps they might want to be taking. We also have wellness zones. Those are located on the CAP Central Office, North Campus, Piermont, and Munger. They are available for students on a drop-in basis. Uh, there are many wellness resources within the wellness stones that help you manage stress, rest, and relax. There are massage chairs, yoga and meditation tools, um, really helpful in the winter. There's seasonal affective disorder, light therapy, and other wellness resources that you can just kind of pop into when you, on an on-need basis. Oh, I can't take that off. Together All is an online anonymous peer support tool available for free to our students. It's a clinically moderated online peer-to-peer -peer mental health community. So online would be the difference between it and our peer-to-peer -peer counseling. It reaches and empowers a diverse population of students to anonymously seek and provide support. Another offering is you will. It's an addition to CAP services. It provides students with video, phone, chat, and messaging sessions with licensed mental health professionals at no cost. Um, this counseling option uh, offers students greater flexibility and allows CAPS to expand its service capacity. It provides uh, services with access to therapists of their choice with uh, the mode of their choice. So it's a newer offer offering um, for our campus. And a teletherapy service is available during the day as well as evenings, weekends, and holidays. Uh, and it's available for folks in all 50 states. So there's more information there on the website if you're interested. As well as international if you study abroad too, which has been one way that we've utilized it quite well. Absolutely. Uh, 
And then additional resources, there is a YouTube channel for CAPS as well. And it has videos such as how to help a friend, how to initiate a conversation with a professor and other different um, navigational tools for your first year in school. And then we also have off-campus mental health resources from these websites. I will also try and put those in the chat before we sign off as well. Great, and thanks so much. We'll now transition to the question and answer, answer portion. So please feel free to ans, uh, add questions and we'll try our best to address them. And if you prefer, you're also welcome to email CAPS at the email address included on the slide and uh, on our website as well. So, uh, you know, as we transition to this Q&A section, we just wanted to welcome you. Welcome to U of M and go blue.